Hello learners, myself Dr. Taruna Malhotra. In last discussion, we discussed about how all children, how all children learn. Today, the topic of presentation is motivation and discipline. First of all, we will discuss about classroom management. Classroom management means a host of proactive strategies that teachers can implement to prevent the occurrence of problem behaviors and create a classroom environment that is conducive to learning. Today, we will focus on the problem of indiscipline among students and how a teacher can motivate the class to learn. As a teacher, you have the experience of some of your students being very attentive, participative, ask various questions and submit assignments on time while some others are bored, disinterested and not able to perform to the expected level. The basic difference between these two groups is with the respect to their motivational level and discipline. So today firstly we will discuss about what is motivation. Motivation is an internal state or condition sometimes described as a need, desire or want that serves in active that serves to activate or energize behavior and give it direction. Motivation results from the interaction of both conscious and unconscious factors such as intensity of desire or need means how the need is intensed, incentive or reward value of the goal, how the reward is valuable, expectations of the individual and of how his or her peers. Motivation. Motivation basically activates, means gets you going, then maintains, keeps you going, guides, determines where you are trying to go. In this way, it helps you to perform the behave. Motivation can be divided into two parts, intrinsic motivation or internal motivation, extrinsic motivation or external motivation. Now let us discuss about intrinsic motivation. It arises from a desire to learn a topic due to its inherent interest for self-fulfillment, enjoyment and to achieve a mastery of the subject. It exists with the individual rather than relying on external pressures or desire for reward. Such kind of persons are known as perfectionist, are known as extremist because they are motivated internally. Thus, intrinsically motivated or activated learners tackle assigned ta tasks willingly and are eager to learn classroom material more likely to process information in effective ways like by engaging in meaningful learning and more likely to achieve at high levels. Now what is extrinsic motivation? External motivation is motivation to perform and succeed for the sake of accomplishment a specific result or outcome. External motivation comes from influences outside of the individual. Common extrinsic motivations are rewards and the threat of punishment. Some students behave well because of extrinsic motivation because of fear of punishment. Thus, extrinsically motivated learners may have to be persuaded or prodded, may process information only superficially and are often interested in performing only easy tasks and meeting minimal classroom requirements. However, intrinsic extrinsic motivation is equally necessary. Now, ways to motivate the students, I am t going to tell you some ways how we can tackle the students and how can we motivate the students. First one is ice breaking session, positive greetings at the door and pre-correct problem behavior, positive verbal or non-verbal interactions with students to establish a positive classroom atmosphere as they walk into the class like give a smile, give a good gesture. To welcome them. Goal setting and performance feedback. For this, establish a reasonably ambitious behavioral goal for each student keeping in mind the individual differences. Deliver periodic feedback to the students based on their progress towards goal attainment. In this way, they will be, they will be reinforced. Reward the individual students or the entire class for meeting present goal. Next is Praise students in ways big and small. Recognize work in class, 
it can be big, it can be small, but the teacher should recognize the work in the class, should display good work in the classroom and send positive notes home to parents, hold weekly awards in your classroom, organize academic activities, rallies to acknowledge students' hard work. Next is spread excitement like a virus. Show your enthusiasm in the subject and use appropriate, concrete and understandable examples to help students grasp it. Firstly, try to make improvements in the subjects in which they are interested. After that, consider a different one so that they may feel excited to learn something new. Means the teacher has to involve herself or himself firstly, then the students can be involved easily in a new topic. Next is effective queuing systems. For this, the teacher should develop signals that release and regain attention. For this, the teacher should avoid shouting or using the light switch. Rather, the teacher should utilize students themselves as a way to prompt and regain attention from other students. Like, if you can hear me, raise your hand. Clap three times. Snap three times. Next point is mix it up. It's a classic concept and basis for differentiated instruction. It caters to all types of learners, may be intelligent, may be dull, using a variety of teaching methods. By doing this in an orderly way, the teacher can also maintain order in the classroom. In a generic example for daily instruction, 10 minutes to open class, introduce the concept for 15 minutes, Discuss or group work for 15 minutes, question and answer or guided work time to finish the class. This way students know what to expect every day and have less opportunity to act up. Next is assign classroom jobs. As a teacher with students create a list of jobs for the week. Using the criteria of your classroom requirements let students earn the opportunity to pick their classroom jobs for the next week. These jobs can cater to their interest and skills. Classroom job, job examples are like attendance of the class, updating the calendar, cleaning the boards, putting up chairs, etc. Next point is introduce incentive programs. Incentives we all know which boost our behavior. The teacher can also translate this student empowerment into an incentive program. Students who attended class all week, completed all assignments and obeyed all classroom rules can be given incentive like preparing some cultural act, it can be dance, drama or whatever he likes or relaxation from some assignment. Next is 5 to 1 ratio of positive to negative interactions. Positive interactions consist of words, gestures like thumbs up or physical contact, pat on the shoulder. These have a positive quality to them. Helps students learn expected behavior and teachers and builds stronger relationship with students. Scolding or corrective statements work better in the context of a positive reinforcing environment. Relating lessons to students life. Here, the teacher should try to relate the lesson to student's life so that the teacher, so that the student may feel interested or feel motivated. Whether it is budgeting for family festival gifts or choosing short stories about his or her city or friends means the events which are related to their daily lives. Then the students will care more as they identify themselves on their everyday lives in what they are learning. Next point is track improvement. In some difficult classes, it can feel like a never ending uphill battle. So try to remind students that they have come a long way. Set achievable, short term goals, emphasize improvement, keep self evaluation forms to fill out and compare throughout the year or revisit mastered concepts that they once struggled with to refresh their confidence. Smiling and being means mirror neurons. Neurons that fire when another person acts. Thus, the neurons mirrors the behavior of the other. It can be implemented like 
students learn via modeling from teachers and peers students will treat us how we treat them if we are good to them they will be good to us if we don't talk to them sweetly or softly they will also be bad with us next is build connections set up a buddy system so students can contact each other or form study groups take pictures of students in small groups or individually and post in the classroom or form small groups for projects mix and form new groups several times in this way the teacher can build connections by developing a buddy system next is engage students with active learner centered strategies use varied method of presentation and incorporate technology like usage of blogs wikis powerpoint videos etc the teacher shouldn't talk or give lecture for more than 15 minutes at a single time should take the break as studies show that students thrive when given computer based assignments means students want to be active during the instead of listening passively use interactive ways to keep students engaged as well as motivate them next is reward positive behavior outside the classroom it means not only in class the student should be rewarded outside the classroom also like tie service opportunities cultural experiences extra curricular activities into the curriculum for extra credit or alternative options on assignments now we will discuss about discipline in this we will we will discuss how we can make our students disciplined for this we have to know the meaning of discipline in broader sense self discipline which is process whereby a student comes to regulate his or her own behavior to fit in with his own purposes or the needs of the others whereas in narrow sense discipline means punishment where there is fear in the mind which instead of helping in the long run creates more problems so in the school context discipline relates to the problem of maintaining classroom order which is based on a sense of responsibility the student should have a sense of responsibility for the classroom jobs or for his own studies consideration for others the student should take care of others also self respect if we will respect ourselves only then we can respect others a sense of belongingness if we feel associated with the prevailing environment only then we can have a sense of belongingness positive teacher student relationship to bring positive outcomes it is most required positive teacher student relationship in this way discipline is composed of a sense of responsibility consideration for others self respect a sense of belonging or positive teacher student relationship wango in 2010 defines discipline as the training especially of the mind and character aimed at producing self control ordered behavior and skillfulness so it can be said that discipline refers to the state of physical or mental orderliness in a learner as a result of desirable learning externally imposed by rules punishment and rewards whereas in discipline refers to a situation where a student behavioral pattern is contrary to the laid down conduct in a school this behavior is manifested by boycotting classes bullying drug abuse sneaking out of school and writing now we will discuss how what are the causes of indiscipline first one is favoritism indiscipline may be caused by teachers who favor some students in their teaching and classroom management the other students may see this as a sign that everything is allowed in spite of the rules other students may also see this favoritism as an offense against them which leads to rebellion next is truancy in many rural schools a large number of students remain absent from schools without any genuine reason when they come to school after a gap they do not understand the lesson and this kind of uh, 
problem leads to disturbances in the classroom. Next point is disobedience. Many a time a few students do not deliberately obey teacher's word or instructions. They start making a noise. This disobedience on the part of students leads to the indiscipline. Next is clowning. Clowning means smoking or cutting jokes on others. It is smoking and cutting jokes at the cost of others loudly is a tactics adopted by some students to channelize their own failure which they lead to scuffling, shouting, crying, causing disturbances in the class which is also a big reason of indiscipline. When the rules are not enforced, when a student is not punished for an offence, he or she goes on to commit more offence as the rules are not properly enforced in the classroom. Next is lack of communication. When the rules are not clearly communicated, the students don't consider those rules mandatory to obey, then indiscipline prevails. Next point is teacher-student relationship. The teacher and student's relationship is essential for any learning process. If there is a breakdown in this relationship, indiscipline emerges. A good relation produces positive outcomes, whereas a bad relationship of teacher and student will bring problems and will again prevail in the way of indiscipline. Next is lack of leadership. When a teacher doesn't fulfill his role as a leader, cannot move the mob of students, there will certainly be students or students who will be glad to take this role, thus indiscipline appears. Next one is bad habits. Some students may have acquired bad habits from previous teaching experiences. Once a student, for instance, has formed the habit of coming to school late, it will be hard for him or her to change his behavior. So, bad habits also cause indiscipline. Now, we will discuss about the ways how to instill dis discipline in classroom. First one is agree on rules. As a teacher, you and your students should agree on the rules that everybody should abide by. No student would consider coming late for school as a proper conduct. So, start a list of proper classroom conduct. Next is framing, updating and reviewing the rules through discussion with the students. This will give students a sense of ownership or responsibility. Effective teachers discuss with their students the reason for the necessity of rules, provide reasonable explanations for each rule and explain how the rules will help everyone succeed by making their class run smoothly. Novel instance of indiscipline may occur, that is why the rules and regulations may undergo updates or reviews from time to time. Next is avoid unnecessary ambiguity. Restrain from giving a long list of prohibitions and restrictions you expect to maintain. There should be not very much no and no, never. Adopt a task oriented attitude, engage students in a variety of tasks which are both challenging and interesting to instill the discipline among students. Ensure that unfavorable conditions are minimized. Factors like provision of space, light, adequate materials, lessening of time pressure and other irritants must be taken care of to instill discipline. Next is appropriate atmosphere, things that will prevent students from getting involved in discipline should be discouraged and prevented. Communication. There should be proper good communication of the rules concerning discipline in the classroom. Manifest concern for the students. Fatigue and boredom on the part of students invite disciplinary troubles, therefore provide a variety of challenging tasks and which and switch smoothly from one activity to other before apathy or restlessness sets in. Next is maintain contact with the whole group. 
the teacher should maintain the contact with the whole class even though much of the attention is directed to the problems of an individual child the teacher should move around the class while teaching students shouldn't get the feeling that they are not being watched carefully now some of disciplinary actions they are, they should be in such a way that defaulters will not want to be disciplined second time after defaulting for a first time first one is oral warning when of an offense is not that serious or when an offender is a first offender he can be given oral warning this should be done in a quiet area in the classroom or just outside the door as to as not to embarrass the child next is actions when the offense persist one of the following actions follow time out detention notice to parents informing parents if the same offender persist again with his disruptive behavior parents are informed of previous inappropriate behaviors and the student is warned that if the indiscipline continues a behavior plan will be in place suspension if an offense is strong the student may be suspended for a day or two and more more action should follow the offender should be referred to a board specialist a behavior specialist and parent conference is called disciplinary action is always carried out in sequence it should also be favorable that disciplinary action be undertaken in such a way that offenders are discouraged to repeat or commit another disruptive behavior to sum up it can be concluded develop learning environment in your classrooms congenial to your students learning group students appropriately to promote effective learning in the classroom facilitate individualized and group learning in your classroom plan for optimum use of the available space and time in the classroom for children's learning organize different types of sitting arrangements for different activities while employing activity based approach in the classroom learning motivate students for learning and maintain classroom discipline for smooth conduct of learning activities so in the last thank you